There is a feature documentary film up for, uh, it's nominated for an Oscar, and it just won a BAFTA, and it's called For Sama, and it's about Aleppo. So I've written something about Aleppo. The city of Aleppo is 5,000 years old and larger than the city of Damascus. Uh, for centuries, it was the western terminus of the Silk Road to China. And in the summer of 2016, it became the center of resistance to Assad's iron rule. On September 8, 2016, libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson was asked what he would do about Aleppo. His response was, what's Aleppo? <laughs> Perhaps the following will provide a clue. Yes. <laughs> Aleppo. Just get it started, whispered the spy. Who knows what tomorrow may bring? Just control some land and we can come in and we'll support your Arab Spring. Whatever is wrong, we're going to fix because no one can stop our SEAL Team 6. Now that I have your fixed attention, it may be time to mention the deception is the key to successful war. The fruit vendor set himself on fire while Egyptians gather to scream for bread. Corruption shows such an ugly head they'd rather resist and end up dead, and the state police are happy to oblige them. Idealists with paintbrush scrawls say they want Assad to fall. At least on university walls, the revolution sound its call. All around the university, his pictures are painted with black. Get rid of all fascists, they say, and take our country back. At night, on roofs and street corners, you could watch the people dance, and you didn't need a translator to figure out their chants. They shouted, here is Aleppo. Here is Aleppo. Here is Aleppo. And then once again, and once more, they wished for peaceful victory with no idea of what was in store. And oh, what tangled webs we weave when we direct the Judas goat who leads the lambs to slaughter across a poison boat. Deception is the key to war. No one but you should know the score. You say that you will help the poor, but they have no way of knowing. That spy with a smile, he's not thinking about you. He's thinking of what some people in Europe will do when five million people with different colored skin come knocking on the door and begging to come in. We may not be perfect, but there is no sin that you can call original. A river flowing through the city as the fighting in the streets get gritty becomes a sight that isn't pretty. Bodies get caught in iron grates along with trash and paper plates sent from the other side that waits to send a message with some weight to those who once attacked the state are now not recognized as human. Helicopters dropping barrel bombs, the neighborhoods to crack, the fragments they fly everywhere to make up for the precision they lack. Was it an airstrike? Was it a tank shell? You can only tell the difference by the sound and by the smell. The man outside the laundrette was lighting up his cigarette, was blown to bits by Russian jets trying not to hit the minarets. They were aiming for the hospitals. The smoke's so thick it seems like night, but no one will give up the fight. The Russian jets are dropping bombs just like they did last week in Homs, and anywhere that took up the gun, they have the people on the run. But you cannot run. You can only fall when the tanks encircle all your walls, and you happen to live in the city of Aleppo. A mother waits with her dead child. Her eyes are wild. Her look is wide. He is my life. He is my son. Now look at him and what they've done. Her heart will not be reconciled. No one around can lift her grief. They offer to hold him no matter how brief. She shouts, if you take him, you are a thief, and I will never forgive you. What? Are you filming this? Who will look into the abyss? Who will dare the snake to hiss or see what's left after death's kiss? You'd rather tune out into bliss than pay attention to things that matter. The European continent will take from the Middle East. The ones who are most different are the ones they want the least. They climb the walls and scale the gates. Meanwhile, reborn fascists wait to spread the fear and tap that hate. In broadcast, they declare checkmate as if this was a game that they were playing. 
Soldiers have their orders to shoot doctors without borders. Mm -hmm. And anyone else who gets in the way, journalists and messengers resist, people in the world insist that such brutality should not exist. Now, there's a global war on you. Just like the turning of the screw, it's hard to know what's false or true when they control the airwaves. Wearing masks of righteous sanity, committing crimes against humanity, they control the news portrayal with no question of betrayal. We never thought that this could happen here. Abstract ideas that we hold dear, we plunged ahead and had no fear. But in the fog of war, there's one thing clear, that thought is not a weapon. From the Philippines out to Brazil, no despot hesitates to kill. The list of them keeps growing longer. As time goes by, they just get stronger. Ranchers set the jungles burning, hoping to increase their earnings. And even when the despot falls, the corporations still make the calls. Projection screens behind thick walls and internet robot teams with automatic trawls, hoping to find a weakness. Deception is the key to war. There is no original sin. There is only what we are told and whether we choose to listen. Lines of suited congressmen with flag and eagle pens dance drills in tight formation, exchanging briefcases full of sins. They sit not in the jailer's dock, but as judges with their grins as they accuse the lambs who will all be led to slaughter. Preach democracy at home and betrayal abroad. With people fighting everywhere, it's easy to maraud. Stand near a flag on the TV set, it's easy to defraud. If any eyebrows raise at home, just say it's the will of God. While the rest of us stand with gaping jaw, they pin the Medal of Freedom on Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> and I have to ask, how many streets can a child walk down before he is blown into dust? And how many lies can some people be told before they will no longer trust? We look to you, Sama, our name for the sky. Sky without fighters, sky without sun, sky without clouds, where we once had fun. The people who resisted here have nowhere left to hide. Whole families that once were strong now beg mercy from the other side. And in my dreams, George Washington just fell down on his knees and cried. But his cries will not be heard when coming from the city of Aleppo. Thank you. That's dedicated to Molly June Parvin.